Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 9 of our FTB Neotech Mod Pack playthrough. I hope you're having a fantastic day so far, as mine is going swell. And without further ado, let's dive into everything that's new. So you'll probably notice that the base has gotten some uh, upgrades with some crystals up top and a whole lot of glass off to the side. And this little barrel down here, which isn't really that special given we already know all about this. But yeah, this, this tree farm really cranks it out. So set it up. It may mess up one or two times. I'm not sure what happened in the beginning with our tree farm. I guess don't set two Steve Cart's setups too close to one another. Uh, and you should be fine. But yeah, it's been running like a hoss ever since. And I think I should go into the fact that we have made quite a bit of progress in between last episode and this episode. So I meant to only do a little bit, I'm not going to lie. And I ended up doing a, a whole lot of because, well, I just had the time and I was like, well, yeah, you know, this a lot of this early stuff is just read the recipe, go gather 10 items, come back, place them in the machine, wait 30 seconds, read the next recipe, go gather 10 items, come back, and so on and so forth. So... We've done, um, well, like I said, quite a bit, and we may end up breaking this into two videos just so I can go over everything. I'm just going to turn that off for a minute because it's, uh, it's a little annoying. So first things first, we built the Atomic Reconstructor. This is um, right here after the Assembler, right? And this is the one that mentions Forcecraft, yada, yada, yada. We'll get into Forcecraft, I'm sure. We'll probably have to. Um, but for the time being, the Atomic Reconstructor can take a variety of materials and convert them to more advanced materials, yada, yada, yada. Essentially, what this item does is allow you to obtain a lot of crafting resources that you'll need later on. So, like, let me go. Oh, that's actually pretty useful. I didn't know you could turn a red mushroom into a nether uh, wart. But if you're having trouble finding it or finding piglins, that could be a pretty easy solution there. Any hoosers, let me find what we'll actually need. So you ended up, you will end up needing diamantine crystals, which I think comes into play with uh, Project E or uh, Equivalent Exchange, which is the original Project E, but has since been updated and so on and so forth. We'll eventually need these emeraldic uh, crystals and, you know, there's different lenses you can make. Apparently you can make leather from rotten flesh. That's pretty cool. Um, you'll need a lot of rest restonia, which is just redstone and... You'll need a lot of Inori, which is just iron. So a lot of different things. And basically, you just put what you need in front of it. Um, we can do a little demonstration real quick. Let me turn off my magnet. So essentially, you throw whatever you need in front of it. And you can do an entire stack at once if you want to. I have this um, set to deactivation with redstone. So redstone is on it. It's not going to fire. Otherwise, it's going to continuously fire. And we'll see what happens. Boop. So it'll fire that laser every so often. It'll use some energy and um, then it'll give you whatever, you know, the resulting end thing should be. So for redstone, put it in front of it, you atomic it, and then boom, you get your crystal. And that's that's pretty much it. So like I said, kind of a complicated machine to make. Or hold on, I may be confusing this one. Okay, this one isn't too bad. You'll need an iron casing, which I'm pretty sure you either get that from a quest or I didn't buy mine from a villager. So maybe I found mine out in the world, but also you can make it um, using iron large plates, treated sticks and black quartz. All of these things we've already been over so far in the series. So if you've been following along, then that should be no problem to you. Um, so with the atomic reconstructor out of the way, we actually needed that in order to build the empowerer. And the Empowerer allows us to get into the Equivalency mod, which we did, and I'm happy to say that because it's a very nice mod. Um, you won't need to build the display stands that you typically will need with the Empowerer because it'll actually give you four display stands for free. And that's going to be this setup right here. So we have the Empowerer in the middle, and then two blocks out on each cardinal direction, we have... <clears throat> excuse me, a voice crack. <laughs> no, we have um, a display stand. And it may not look like it, but these are actually receiving power. They're just receiving it underneath. And this is the same power coming from this one LV steam turbine engine, which so far has powered all of these blocks um, very sufficiently. I've not needed to replace it or upgrade it or literally do anything with it. That being said, I do typically only use one of these um, machines at a time. Not because I'm like, oh, don't, don't do two at once. 
but I've just never, I, I don't know, never needed to, I suppose, um, or wanted it to, I guess is a better, better representation there, because I'm sure I've, I've needed to, it's just something I haven't done. Any hoosers, so, yeah, one, one turbine, as long as you're not going crazy on shit, it, it's good, it's gonna get you there. Um, and then, yeah, these, the powers just ran up underneath it, so... That's how that's working, um, but you will need to provide power to the display stands. However, you don't need any to the empowerer. That's that's a little difficult to say. <laughs> but the whole reason behind the empowerer is, it, as it says, it allows you to get into the equivalency mod uh, branch. And whenever you come here, you'll see the Philosopher's Stone is sort of the base node. And you'll have blaze ember and blaze gold ingots, which we did manage to go to the nether and get some blaze and yada, yada, yada. We'll get to that part here in a minute. Um, but what you'll need is empowered diamantine crystal. So you take your initial diamantine crystal, two balls of clay, a block of clay, and light blue da, and set it up in the uh, machines just as such. So the crystal in the middle, two clay balls on the side, a clay uh, block and light blue dye and then it'll automatically just craft together now as far as the other portion for this goes blaze ember and blaze gold you'll get that from the dire technologies so if you're following Pramagel goo it brings you down to blaze bloom goo which gives you blaze gold and blaze ember um phew, sorry we, we obviously covered a whole lot and I'm trying to get through all this while also not doing it too fast, but also being as detailed as I can. So Blaze Bloom um, Goo is made very simply electric mixer, which we already have access to. Redstone, we already have access to. Primogel Goo, we've already done that. Netherwart, um, we got this. You can trade piglins, but I'm not sure... Maybe we found this in the nether? We had to have found this in the nether. Because we, we went to a fortress, and we'll we'll get into that as well. But um, nonetheless, so you'll get your blaze gold from... You will need your alloy kiln again, because that's the only way to process raw blaze gold. Which I think is a bit of an oversight, because by the time that you have this, right? By the time you have this material, your alloy kiln should be like... A thing of the past. <laughs> I broke mine like five episodes ago. What are we doing here? Anyway, so you will need this. You'll need some coke dust. Combine them together. You get the ingots. Obviously, you combine the ingots and everything together to get you further. Now, Blaze Ember. Hold on. I should go through this a little bit more thorough. Blaze Bloom uh, goo works the exact same way as the Primo Gel goo. So you place down the goo, and then you place a block of the corresponding material beside it. So... For this red goo, we can place down a block of gold. <clears throat> Let's see here. Sorry for the clearing my throat. Typically, I mute myself, but I didn't didn't know it was coming until it was here. So you just place it down beside it, and you'll see it'll start to transform. And that's how you get your uh, blaze gold ingots, or whatever the raw blaze gold. And then if you want the other stuff, the blaze ember, you just do this with a block of coke coal. So I'm not going to do that because it's expensive and I'm not going to lie. I don't think I need it any further past than what I already have. So let's see. We need it for the Philosopher's Stone. And yeah, I can burn 72 items. So <laughs> I mean, unless you just want really good fuel, this is literally the only crafting recipe or the only reason you will ever need this. So just put down one block, call yourself good, and call the five extra ones that you get out of or whatever. Yeah, you probably won't get five extra, but you you know what I mean. Call the other ones scrap because that's that's essentially what they are. Now, with that all explained, we're into the equivalency mod. Um, and I didn't want to go too far into this because we can already get to dark matter and red matter, which is pretty nice. Um, so you have the Philosopher's Stone. This is obviously the base for everything in this mod, um, as it has always been. But what you'll need this for is for converting materials. That's actually really cool. I forgot about uh, iron being able to make ender pearls. Any hoosers. And one thing of coal can make four charcoal. That's really cool as well. We can use this now to make infinite diamonds, infinite gold from those diamonds, and infinite iron from that gold. So we really don't need anything producing gold, diamonds, iron, or emeralds 
anymore because our emeralds are going to be solved hopefully in the nearer future when we get our auto farming or auto trading um, set up with the villagers done, which we'll get around to that here in a minute, sort of explaining what all I want to do with that. But yeah, so you can take emeralds and you get two diamonds to one emerald, which is really nice given we can go turn four, sometimes three iron ingots into one emerald. And then obviously that one emerald gives us like, I don't even know how many iron ingots. We could do that real quick. So we have one emerald goes to two diamonds goes to eight gold, goes to 64. So one emerald gives us 64 iron ingots, which obviously we can trade that back for 16 emeralds. And so it just sort of keeps cycling itself. Moving on to our villagers, we have a brand new setup. I hope you like the room. Um, some of it's a little unfinished, but for the large majority, this is how it'll be. We'll have another row of these guys over on this side. And that's actually something been meaning to do so let's see just do this while i'm here real quick you're lined up right there she's there there and there right yes and then one two three dun, 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 dun. cool now we can have a whole another line of villagers over here and give them jobs and yada 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 I just like to start my villagers with their jobs outside of the blocks and then, you know, then we can move them inside, but have them have them have a little bit of freedom. They're cool to look over here and see them bouncing every once in a while and we can, you know, choose which enchantments we want, which I did lock this one in because I want that. I should lock this one in, but um, yeah, whatever. So <laughs> we're just going to have all of our traders in here. Eventually, when we get the auto trader, it'll also be set up in here. Somebody had made a fair point. You can set up a pretty good auto trader with the farmer right? Because it auto outputs carrots, plus um, a farmer trader over here once you have the auto trader. And I think that's a good idea, but I think we're probably going to be automating our sugar cane. I have the machine turned off right now, but trust me when I say it produces a lot using only three. So if we upgrade this system to where the collection method is a bit better and there's more of it, I think using um, a paper farm is actually going to be more efficient trading that in, even though we will need more paper than carrots, I think, but not by a whole lot, right? 22, and then this is, sorry, this is 24, so. Yeah, not too big of a difference there, and like I said, this is, I mean, it, it works really, really well, and I think it'll be faster than if we just leave it to this farmer. So ultimately, that's how we'll have automatic emerald generation, which will give us automatic diamonds, automatic gold, and automatic iron, so, and automatic ender pearls by way of the iron. So that is Project E, or Equivalent Exchange, as they are using actually Equivalent Exchange 4. So it's not Project E in this mod pack. Um, and that's that's kind of nice. It's not overly broken. We also can't get Creative Flight with it, which I'm a little bummed about, I won't lie. <laughs> I like having Creative Flight. It's just, um, it makes things easier, and obviously that's why they don't give it to you, because it makes things a little too easy when it comes to combat. And I think most mod pack designers would like to avoid that just for the simple fact of not uh, trivial trivializing. Am I saying that right? Not making everything too easy. We'll just go with that path. So up next, we have our certs quartz blocks, which we did get because I went and found a meteor. There's one very, very close to the house. This is where it sent us to, and we'll probably go find another meteor at some point in the future, just so I can show you guys and gals. But I just don't feel like running that far right now. And I'm pretty sure this is a meteor. Skystone, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely a meteor right here. Uh, you can kind of confirm. This one was a little hard to tell because it was literally up in the snowy mountains. So, like, everything was covered with snow. There's no way I was ever going to be able to see that on the map. But outside of snow biomes, they're pretty easy to see just on the map. If you zoom in and you hover the darker stone here, You'll see that it says Skystone at the bottom middle of my um, my screen there, and I guess yours as well. That's how you'll know it's a meteorite because Skystone only comes from meteorites. So meteors, I you know I forget which one is the one that's broken the atmosphere and actually hits and yada yada yada. You can't call them meteorites, meteoroids, meteors. Like you just use different words. Don't use the same word three times with just a, a different ending on it. Any hoosers, when you go there and you break the block in the middle, it will give you nine of these certs quartz 
blocks that are flawed, I believe. So mine are starting to kind of degrade and they'll they'll do that. So here's a flawed one. Um, essentially, every time a blood or a, you know, cluster, whatever you want to call these things, every time one grows, it essentially has a chance to degrade your search quartz block back to a normal search quartz block instead of being one that can spawn these little crystals. The ones that they give you, it's plenty to get you started. They don't, they don't lie. It is, it is enough as long as you just don't go wasting them. Don't break them when it says large search quartz bud. What you want to do is you want to wait for them to say, none of these are ready. Not a single one of these are ready. What about over here? You want to wait for them to say search quartz cluster, right? So this is a medium search quartz bud. This is a search quartz cluster. Once you have a search quartz cluster, you're going to want to take a tool, preferably a pickaxe that has fortune on it because fortune does work on this. And you just break that crystal and it's going to give you search quartz crystals. From that, you can pretty much go into applied energistics, which is what we've done here, right? Um, and this um, kind of gets over into the silicone because you'll need search quartz crystals in order to make silicone dust. So you need search quartz dust plus quartz dust plus sand and an electric mixer to get silicone dust. Quartz dust we get from nether quartz, just putting it in a macerator and we're good to go. Search quartz dust, we just put the search quartz crystals, goodness me, um, that we just got off of these little budding amethyst geode things, basically, right? They're just recolored. And take some of that as well. And you just basically reprocess them. So you can use this to make tools, which I think the tools have something with them. Maybe a decent harvest level and a digging speed, and that that's all it is. Yeah. Any hoosers, you can use them for that. You can crush them down into the dust, which obviously you'll need in order to make silicone, which, you know, three, three for three is not a bad recipe output as far as this goes. And of course, the silicone you will use for making silicone ingots, which will then go into... Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm skipping a whole piece here. Let me get back to silicone somehow. Ah, you'll let me get there. Macerator, quartz dust, silicone, silicone. Because you'll be using a lot of silicone plates for the diodes, for the transitors, um, double and triple batteries, things of that nature, right? For the indoped silicone plates, which seems pretty obvious. And last but not least, for the printed silicone that you need for applied energistics. You need this stuff in order to make, oh, apparently also the raw logic chips from Laser IO. That's pretty nifty. And you need blaze gold. Okay, so this stuff just became a lot more useful in my eyes because Laser IO is, um, is really good. Anyways, you'll need the printed silicone so you can silicone with tomato, tomato. So you can combine it with your printed circuits, whether it be logic or engineering or calculation to give you your actual processors. And as we all know with applied energistics, processors are how you actually complete things. So here's the circuit mission, right? And it just basically says, go through and get one of each. The circuits, the presses at least, the logic presses, the inscriber presses, however you wanna call them, you'll find them in the media or anyone that's played applied energistics in the past you know the drill with this stuff. The only thing that's different is now you're going to be putting it into the electric packer. So put the corresponding press. For gold, it's the logic press. For... I know I have more than just that. For diamonds, or for the engineering press, it's diamonds. And so on and so forth. They go into the electric packer, nothing special here. You get your printed circuits, and then you can combine your printed circuits with your printed silicone, right? With some molten redstone to get your engineering processor. Molten redstone, we've not talked about this, but it is just made from putting redstone dust into a steam blast furnace. So you remember that device that I said was a little bit useless at the end of last episode? Or maybe it was the end of the episode before that. Last episode was kind of a jumble because 
we ran out of time and I meant to come back, but I never, never got the opportunity. Anyways, yeah, you just put redstone into an item input hatch for your um, steam blast furnace and then out will go molten redstone. You can do this through um, pneumatic craft if you're already over in pneumatic craft stuff. But if you're not over in pneumatic craft, just, just take a stack of redstone and load her up. <laughs> Anyways, um... So yeah, that'll do all that. Let me get a bucket to actually get this redstone fluid up because I don't want to just waste waste the processing time where it could be creating us more and more and more because you will actually need this stuff pretty heavily, especially when we get into all that we're going to do with it. So put all that in there. Um, now the controller is another thing that you'll need to make and this does require more molten redstone But then you will also have a few things that we haven't gone over yet. So let's take a look at Fluix crystals first off Fluix crystals can be made in the electric mixer using nether quartz Redstone and charged certs quartz You can charge certs quartz just by taking a normal crystal and putting it in the polarizer So all of that's fairly simple there as far as how we get flux or Fluix, however you want to say it the electronic circuit, um, everything for this we already had access to, right? We already did the electronic circuit board with the aluminum because we got the aluminum from up top. Electrum is no different than any of the other um, alloying so far in this pack. So you just put silver and gold together, which has always been the recipe for Electrum. And make sure you put it into a mixer. Then it'll give you Electrum dust. And of course, you can smelt that down and yada, yada, yada. Oftentimes with the Electrum, you're using it for Electrum wire and the Electrum fine wire. So keep that in mind. And I believe that's all of this because you, you basically just needed the silicone for this process here, right? You have steel plates, but then you also have silicone. And that's all that you are really gated behind. And then you just need sky steel ingots, which is another in-world transformation. This one, a little scary because you got to throw the stuff in lava. I don't know about you. I don't like throwing things in lava unless I don't like the things that I'm throwing in there. Um, so you throw in a charged certs quartz crystal, throw in one steel ingot and a sky stone, and it'll give you two sky steel ingots back, which of course can be used for mega item cell housing because I guess that's a thing. <laughs> but more importantly, it can be used to create your ME controller. Which, me being the silly goose that I am, I thought that the ME controller was required the same way that the refined storage controller is required, but it is not. Also, our Enderman friend's still hanging out up there. He did have a buddy. I don't know if y'all remember over here for the longest time, but he kind of died when we set that little structure up top there. Um, and I think that that is everything outside of this. We actually set up an ME system. Again, once you get into matter to energy, which is simply building the energy acceptor, steel plates, quartz glass, and analog circuits, all of this is very simple. Search quartz dust, glass, get you your glass. Um, do, 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 where it is? Then you'll be sent over to this mod page where it's basically just telling you how applied energistics works and how you can go find um, the meteors. And then it gives you something that's really special. It gives you flawless budding certs quartz. Now, the difference between the flawless and all of these over here is, well, two things. One, you can't pick this up with silk touch. It will still break. Two, it will never degrade when it's making certs quartz clusters. So we just leave this here for forever and it will stay here for forever. Did I put it in the exact, exact right spot? I don't know, honestly, probably not. Um, like as far as going into automation in the future, because we'll definitely want to automate these things here. Um, but you know, whatever, we'll, we'll see when we get there. It's not a, not a big deal right now. Uh, so we get that. We already went over how to make the Fluix crystals and we already went over how to make the completed processors. So that's all done and done. And that basically leads you into building your system and all that good stuff. So if you want the actual classic storage system that everyone always uses, you'll need an ME drive. And you should have gotten some cables somewhere. Yeah, right here, whenever you get the Fluix Crystal, you get some cables. 
Um, so you'll need the ME drive. You'll need a ME crafting terminal if you want to actually craft within your device here. And then you'll just need a 1K ME storage component or whatever size that you want. What you do after that point is just give it a little energy into the energy acceptor. So again, coming from our LV steam turbine setup, which is still running infinitely as far as I can tell. I haven't had to change fit change fix or uh, adapt none of it thus far it just seems to be able to handle the load and usually i have yeah a stack of coke over here that i can come dip into if i need to anyways with this setup it's really loosey-goosey as long as you have everything connected through cables like the screen could be way over here as long as the cables are connecting it to the rest of this um, system the controller from my understanding allows you to have more channels and channels are just uh directives as far as what this is connected to if that makes sense like this to this is one channel and i think this to this is one channel i don't think that would be included or interrupted since it can just sort of go directly there um anyways and so yeah the controller just allows you to have more access to your system essentially in our me storage drive we have the 4k uh me item stored cell and this is another thing that i do prefer over on refined storage is it doesn't say types it doesn't care it just says hey you can store a thousand items in here go nuts but with this mod it says you can store four thousand items sort of kind of bytes i don't know if they equal an exact one-to-one -one ratio anyways does it doesn't matter um the 4k 15 of 63 it's just like it's it makes me feel bad because i can't just throw everything in here even though i have 4,000 bytes worth of storage space i only have 63 different types of items i can have in here which when you get into modded 63 is it's really not that much <laughs> so we do have some items in here our crystals you know things that i can use to craft with um, moving into the future and that's basically going to be our applied energistics setup for now. As we continue to expand, basically, I'll just make more and more of these item storage cells, which let me get back to a 1K. So in the 1K, you'll need the Restonia that we already made earlier this episode. You'll need search quartz, which we already talked about. And you'll need a logic processor, which we already talked about. That'll give you a 1K storage component. And with that, you can move on into the larger ones. A 4K takes three 1Ks plus a little extra extra a 16k takes four or three four k's plus a little extra extra oh uh, a 64k actually takes the same thing kind of as a 16k just you know three 16s this is a 256 but the problem with this is it can hold a whole lot of items but it can still only hold 63 types so you know pick your uh pick your battles and pick your items that you're going to be storing rather cautiously is all that i'm saying and who knows maybe we still go with pretty pipes because everything there just seems to make more sense so sorry we're back um whoops oh we were going through the me system right and then all the processors and how to get the item cards and yada 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 so like I said, the only things you'll really need is the ME drive, um, the ME crafting terminal, and then some of the, the storage components and the storage cards. And you're good to go. Um, again, it's not my favorite storage mod just because it does have so many restrictions and it's overly complicated, uh, in my personal opinion. Maybe it's the fact that y'all introduced Fluix and all these different words and names to where refined storage is just like, this is a crafter, this is a pattern, this is an auto crafter. <laughs> uh, well, at least you know where I stand as far as the two of them go, okay? I, I will take simplicity over extra functionality hidden behind a whole lot of extra reading you know, almost any day. That being said, I didn't, again, I didn't start out on Applied Energistics too. So I know a lot of people that were like, well, this is the bread and butter that I've always known. No, no offense to you, you know? There's just more limitations and more effort that has to go in for a system that doesn't quite hold things the exact same. Now, over here on the left, you'll see that we do have AE2 things. 
um, pulled up. And what this essentially allows you to do is ignore everything that I was just talking about. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't care about types of items or any of that hoopla. However, you need netherite in order to make this one work. So, you know, it's a little expensive. That being said, though, netherite actually not horrible as far as how we can go about getting this stuff. So let's see here. Now, we have two different ways. We can use the lens of the miner on the atomic reconstructor, which is the machine that we showed you at the beginning, on some netherrack, and it'll actually occasionally, with a weight of one, convert it into ancient debris. Maybe we do that in the future when we have some way of getting a whole lot of netherrack and can place it down really fast and shoot the laser, yada, yada, yada. You could definitely make a farm with this. However, we can also just take a gold drill, put it in an electric quarry, and then we have a 5% chance of getting some. So we're probably going to go with this route. Um, and the electric quarry is something that we should be really, really freaking close to because that is what I've been working my tail off to get to. Um, now, the electric quarry, we do only have to make this piece, and then we can use the entire rest of the structure from the previous quarry and just leave it there, and it'll continue to work. So I'm really excited about that. Um, what? We get eight electronic circuits from that? That is insane, and I uh, I appreciate it. We're not going to be going into the advanced large steam boiler yet. I don't care too much about getting the in-doped silicone plates. It just makes everything produce 2x of whatever it was going to before, so it's, it's good. But it's not a requirement, you know? So... Um, what I want to get into, like I said, is the electric quarry. That is going to be my next major order of business and what we're going to be striving for here in the future. One other thing that we've gotten into and have dabbled with just a bit, I've also built up a little bit up here just to make it look a little bit nicer, you know, because eventually we are going to have our main base set up for applied energistics up here, as I said, sort of looking down and over everything we're gonna have glass and it should be able to see the entire rest of the base i'm really trying not to look at this enderman he's been with us for it's episode nine at least since episode three so like six episodes he's been with me as far as playtime goes again take take the days played a little lightly because sometimes i fall asleep on my computer sometimes i'll leave the game running and it just keeps going um but we're at 229 days played and again, that's it's a little relative, but that's still a lot. And that's a lot of time for him to have stood in that same spot. So congratulations, I guess, are in order. <laughs> Moving on over here. Holy moly. Why do we have so many eggs? We, we didn't even have that many seeds in there. What are you guys doing pumping out this many? <laughs> I don't need this many eggs. Um, but we've gotten into the chickens mod, which is, I mean, honestly, it's a little annoying because this cold chicken egg has, it's not hatched. It's not hatched at all. And I don't know what to, uh, what to do about that. What are we, what are we thinking? Can I throw it? Can I place it? I can't do anything with it. It's not hatching. <laughs> I'm putting it in the incubator. I have the incubator set to everything appropriately. Trust me. There's a lot going on here, but just trust me. It's at the right situation. Hence why we have the bone white and the flint chickens, but I can't get this cold chicken to grow for nothing. Um, and honestly, these guys were supposed to be putting out some, um, I guess I'll just convert all that. They're supposed to eventually combine into an iron chicken, and I'm just trying to progress through the breeding woes of what the cluck. Because <laughs> there are some things in here that I would like to get access to. Prismarine shard, for example. That'd be nice if I don't have to go actually find that out in the world every single time I want some. Um, blaze rod chicken. Yeah, sign me up. Slime chicken. I'm down. Gas tier. Absolutely. Prismarine. What? Oh, prismarine shard. Prismarine chicken. Wait, tomato, tomato. I think those are really the only ones that I'm super concerned with. Obsidian and gunpowder might be nice. Glowstones, probably pretty good. Nether quartz, I'll, I'll take, you know what I mean? So there's there's quite a few chickens down here that's like, yeah, the free recipes, the extra stuff that you give, 
that'd be greatly appreciated. Um, if you wouldn't mind just growing into a fucking chicken, you know, just doing doing your your stuff. That's so far, I guess, the only really major problem I've had with the mod is this gold chicken just doesn't want to doesn't want to grow. If I have to, I'll sit on it myself. Any hoosers, the other part of the of the quest book here and what the cluck, you start out with the chicken catcher, which you can get a phantom membrane if you wait a couple days and make sure you don't have anything above your head. I know somebody was saying they couldn't get a phantom to spawn. Um, just a little heads up, phantoms won't spawn if you have a block above your head. So even if you've been up for 100 days straight, if there's a block above your head, no phantoms will spawn. Um, and that's kind of to keep the, the game from spawning phantoms when you're down underground and then coming up and there's like eight phantoms you know dive bombing you so it's to, it's to make it to where phantoms attack pretty much when you're able to be attacked right when it's nighttime when you haven't slept and when there's not a block above your head that being said you can also get phantom membranes through the mob farm which we showcased two episodes ago i think and um yeah then you can move on from there smart chicken pretty easy to convert them into whatever, whatever. Also, it's an, it's important to note here, it says chickens can be fed various items to convert them into a different kind of chicken. We start with the basic smart chicken, which has a faster egg production rate than a normal chicken. Find a wild chicken, right click on it with a book to transform it. We already did that, it's no big deal. And then they just hatch regular eggs. You can see what kind of egg or item you'll get here in these little menus, the laying egg and the chicken trot. Still no, like, what is the, what's the odds of creating, you're not using seeds either, so it seems like something here's, something here's gotta be busted, broken, wrong, just, if you're asking personally, something's not, not working over there. I don't want all these eggs in my inventory, alright? So, just trying to get rid of them, and there's a flint one, yeah, I don't know. Any hoosers, once you get down here a little bit more into the chickens quest, you'll notice that things can get a little tricky and finicky, um, but nothing that we haven't already seen outside of this right here, which is using immersive engineering stuff. But it's really not that bad because most of the stuff will give you like you get the blueprint from just getting into immersive engineering, just from making the engineer's workbench, you get the blueprint you need to make the vacuum tubes. So you don't even have to do that. And all you need to make a vacuum tube, tube, sorry, is have one nickel plate, one piece of glass, one copper wire, and one redstone dust. And that'll give you three vacuum tubes, which you can then use for creating your breeder. And that's what this little guy right here is, is essentially combining chickens together. But obviously you can see I've not had a whole lot of luck with it. And it's, it's getting to me. I'm not going to lie. It's getting to me. That being said, I mean, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It does breed chickens together. It just doesn't have as high of a rate as what I would hope for combining them. Oh, still a flint. I was going to say, if I can get an iron one on camera, though, it'll, it'll all be worth it. But I guess not. All right. So moving on from that, we have this setup right here in the back. And actually, you get this entire setup from the egg cracker little quest line here. Um, and basically what it gives you is the thermoelectric generator. Well, not everything back here is given to you. You're not given the fluid pump, but I'll explain that here in just a minute. So thermoelectric generator generates LV or FE rather from just having two different block temperatures on each side. So here we have lava and we have packed ice. I went with packed ice because it doesn't melt like regular ice because obviously we know that can be a bit of a pain. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's generating FE right now for us. And then it gives you the LV wire connectors, which you'll put on one block, place on another. You'll take the wire in hand. It is insulated, so you don't have to worry about touching it and getting shocked or your chickens touching it and getting shocked. Um, but then you just right click on one side, right click on the other, and it'll start to power it. Some machines, such as the pump, has a specific side that the power has to go in. So for the pump, the power has to go on top. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, but other than that, I mean, you're good to go. The wire relays that they give you are good for re-angling how you want the wires to go because you can't actually connect this wire over to there because the path 
is it would be interrupted, I believe. Um, anyways, so we went over the breeder. Yes, I got an iron chicken egg. Let's go. Now let's see if that chicken can incubate because obviously the coal one's just big old no-go. Anyways, up next we have the egg cracker which does exactly as what you would think it does. Put in eggs, get out items. Typically, it's going to be the item that the chicken is. So if it's a log chicken, you're going to get out logs. If it's a flint chicken, you're going to get out flint. If it's a white chicken, you're going to get out white dye. And so on and so forth. Still no growth here. Excuse me. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up that there. Now, I built the fluid pump. It's really not a difficult thing to create, and everything, obviously, we already have access to. Iron plate, fluid pipe, which is just more iron plates, and an iron mechanical, which is iron plates and one piece of copper. So it's very, very cheap. You don't even need the fluid pipes from immersive engineering, which I thought you initially did. What you will need is the hammer from immersive engineering, because if you right click on this side, well, sorry, I'm using the opposite side. If you shift, it'll activate for the opposite side that you're looking at. But anyways, if I right click, you'll see I can change what this side does. So right now it's a fluid input. Now it's a fluid output. Now it has no connection. When I first put this pump down, I was like, okay, attach my wire up. Where's my water at? Well, I didn't change it to an output, so no... No water was coming out because there's no place for water to come out. Anyways, once you have a fluid pump, just place it above a little two by two or an infinite water source, you know, place it on a block that is going to be infinite. And you just give it a little bit of power from your thermoelectric generator, just like so. And you can pump out all the water you need for your incubator because your incubator will actually need water in order to stay within these safe um, humidity levels. Again, I've not seen the coal or the iron chicken grow, so who knows? Um, but yeah, so the incubator will need water and power. And we're supplying that power from the thermoelectric generator. We're supplying the water from the water pump or from the fluid pump. The reason I didn't go with a bronze pump that we've been using over in the other setup is because it means I would have to have the bronze pump. I'd have to have the boiler. And every once in a while, I'd have to come refill it with charcoal or coal or whatever we're using as a burnable resource so this is actually just you know makes more sense it's still super simple it's still very compact and we're already dealing with uh fe energy over here so we might as well stick with that was my thinking um now i think that's pretty much it as far as chickens go here we do have a mob filter from dark utilities and basically what this means is i can walk through but nothing else can because this is a mob filter for players. It only lets players walk through. Anyways, let's go take a snooze real quick and we'll get back into the action and see what else may have been missed in between episodes. Because again, like I said, I've done, I've done a fair amount of work just trying to get things progressed. Because if I don't, then... I mean, taking a look at the mod pack here, we still have three whole phases to go through like I'm, I'm rounding out this one right we're about to get the electric quarry and i could probably already get some of this stuff up over here but we still have three three whole steps to go and these aren't small steps either this is getting into fluids right which i'm not gonna lie the burnable fluids um never been a fan of just because they tend to be a bit more complicated to net essentially the same result. And people are going to say, oh no, they burn more efficiently or they burn for more energy. None of that matters to me. They, they burn what they burn and the other resources burn what they burn. Sure, they may burn for more or burn for longer, but I can just set up more of the other system, not have to worry about separating these two liquids and then adding this one in and transforming it through some magical hoopla and then I get it back and I can pump in you know 100 millibuckets of it or whatever so it's going to take us quite a while to get through these is all that i'm saying and you're gonna to have to bear with me as we push through some of this because holy why <laughs> why 
polyvinyl chloride, hydrochloric acid, butadine, diethyl ether, acrylic acid, ethanol, oxygen. Like there's just so many, um, which is fine. Again, I've never been through a mod pack that, oh, a large steam turbine. That sounds pretty cool. This is where we'll start getting into stainless steel, which will um, really give us some good results. And then this is the absolute end. Titanium nukes are being posted on here. Grab a chest plate, which I definitely want because I'm pretty sure this one gives you creative light. It does with a ton of energy stored in it. So yeah, we, we just have a long way still to go and I don't have time to dilly-dally necessarily all day long. So that being said, I went over the minigun last time. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, I think that's it as far as everything we've done. We went through storage, dimension hopping. I mean, y'all you, saw me go into the nether. We can go back over there just so I can show you how much exploration I had to do in this world. Trust me, it wasn't fun, but it's it's something. Okay, so now that we've gone over everything as far as, well, what everything does, let me get the rest of these... That's a bud. It's a bud. Get the rest of these crystals that I can. It doesn't look like there's really too many. That's a cluster. That's a cluster. Honestly, that may be it. No, that's a cluster. And that's it. Um, but yeah, let me get this process rocking and rolling because I'm trying to make 64 or at least a stack of 64 for each of the processors. Just that way we we have something to go on, you know? It's not just being thrown around all kinds of willy-nilly. So how do I make this one? It is with that. And it's the calculation. By my calculations... So what am I at? I'm at 43, which means I still need about another 21 to hit 64. That's okay. Calculation, ports, and we'll get that rocking and rolling. All right. Sorry for all the interruptions. So we got the uh, printed calculation circuits rocking and rolling. That's fantastic. But I should probably also talk about this stuff that I keep eating, this fruit punch. Um, so through a means of trying to figure out what the hell to do with all the apples and saplings and uh, stuff that we get from Steve's carts, I came across apple juice, which is made really simply by taking three apples and a juicer. The juicer is made just by using terracotta. If you don't have terracotta, you can make terracotta using clay, and then you're good to go. Um, the apple juice is insane. You'll see down there it has 16 bars of saturation, and it refills, what is that, six and a half hunger, so it's like, it's... Pretty much the only thing you'll ever need to eat ever again. I've made one stack and I've only consumed about 20 of them in between everything. So that's it's pretty good. It works. It works very well, I would say. Where, oh where, oh where is my basic fluid tank? I really want some more. Wait a minute. No, that was the right one. That was it. All right, so I think we are finally now all caught up as far as everything that has happened in between episodes and everything that's being worked on, has been worked on, is currently working, not working, turned on, turned off, all that good stuff. Um, and again, my next objective objectives are for me to come over here and set up an auto villager farm, which will probably come after we get the electric quarry because I really want to start getting some netherite. Um, ingots we just need it for so so many recipes and for us to really move forward so that's pretty much all we're uh we're gated behind barrier was now i think what time is it okay i think what we are going to do is split this into two episodes but before we round this one out we're going to go through a bit more of the equivalent exchange mod because i really enjoy it and it's the one that i think um is probably the biggest progressional move that we made within this video here today, or the biggest one that I've sort of have gone over with you guys and gals. So let's store a lot of this random hoopla away here, and we'll just get into the brass tacks of everything, which is equivalent exchange. 
Bring this stuff on down. Coal, coal. I want all the coal. Do, 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 do. And you can see I've started saving up my emeralds since getting into a clothing exchange because I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> They're pretty good free diamonds. I will always and forever say yes to more free diamonds. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and turn this stuff into a new level because what we can do is take the coal, put four of them. It doesn't have to be a stack. We'll just do a stack because that's what I have. And you can get this alchemical coal, which obviously burns for 32 items. And you combine all this stuff, stuff together to get Mobius fuel, which you can, of course, use to make a Nova Catalyst, which is fun stuff. A Destruction Catalyst, which we all know to be a very fun way to mine. So if you haven't currently got a good mining hammer or pickaxe set up, Destruction Catalyst may be the route for you. It is very, very fun to use. Smelts 128 items. And then last but not least, we have... Alternalis fuel, which of course is just crazy, mm, smelting 512 items and also allowing us to get into dark matter and red matter. And as you can see here, it's just Alternalis fuel plus a block of diamonds, which I don't have to tell you guys and gals, that's really, really cheap. <laughs> it's really cheap compared to, well, basically a lot of mod packs out there. They tend to make this gated behind a whole lot of hoopla. I'm just happy that with the equivalent exchange mod sort of making a comeback, there's not as much hoopla. If I if I do say so myself. So let's get three more stacks of coal if I can. One, two, three. Um, and that'll give me several stacks of the Mobius fuel. Well, rather just one. And then we have the Alternalis fuel, which we can use to make dark matter, right? which right now we can make two of them. And then dark matter we can use to make the dark matter sword, the dark matter shovel, all this good stuff. Which, I don't, again, I don't have to tell you if you've ever used Project E or Equivalent Exchange, the dark matter set is pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to lie, the chest piece doesn't seem that good. Do uh, You can upgrade it, and that's still only eight and two? Yikes. It literally doesn't get any better. <laughs> oh well whatever um so yeah then if we want to go ahead and create some dark matter here we very very easily can because we just have a ton of emeralds so we'll take these emeralds we'll set it there make some diamonds and there's two blocks and that Okay, so boop. one dark matter, thank you. Oh, uh, we don't get anything from it. Now, as far as the transmutation tablet goes, while we can get blocks of dark matter and it would take quite a lot of coal, but we can't quite get to the transmutation table yet because we don't have access to the nether star. We don't have access to refined obsidian. We don't have access to stainless steel. So there is a lot of stuff in the equivalent exchange mod that we are being gated behind, just not being a... Uh, progressionally there yet so to speak anyways with that all being said i do have a couple of questions for you guys and gals because i think i am going to be remaining within this sort of smaller section of the cave rather than expanding it backwards um but as this mod pack goes on and as we press further in i am trying to get through this in a rather um sufficient manager right because or yeah manager that, that word works there um because I, I see other mod packs and I want to play those, I want to get into that. So, you know, maybe not spending five years on one is a good idea. That being said, I'm having a whole lot of fun with the Neotech mod pack. It's pushing me through a lot of stuff that I've never had the desire to learn before. But now that I'm learning it, I'm like, hey, that's, that's pretty cool. And it's definitely information that I'll take with me on into future um, mod packs, right? So with that all being said, this is basically the process right now. If you have a good way to farm these crystals that actually works and doesn't just break them. Um, and I'm supposing doesn't use modular routers because I don't know if we've even gotten to the point of being able to use those yet. Let's see. Modular router. Stainless steel. Nope. 
The reason stainless steel is sort of our barrier here is because you need a heat exchanger with some cryofluid. And I don't know what a heat exchanger is, and I don't know what cryofluid is, and I don't know how to get stainless steel hot ingots, right? Probably from the dust, which is from the mixer with chromium and uh, manganese. And, you know, we're, we're just a bit of ways away from that, okay? That's all I'm trying to say. Anyways, ladies, gents, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I know most of it slash all of it was just pretty much catch up and play with equivalent exchange. But, I mean, hey, every once in a while, this is what's got to happen. I hope I wasn't going too fast and explaining things or showing or detailing or any of that. If I was and you missed something throughout the video and you'd like for me to have a further explanation for it, just, you know, comment it down below and uh, we'll move from there. Even if it takes me an extra episode to get to it, I'll, I'll still try to address it. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, stay safe. Stay awesome. And stay crafting. Until next time, you beautiful, beautiful people. Peace.